The Weekly Driver podcast gets support from AmericanMuscle.com, your late model Mustang and F-150 authority, bringing you the hottest products and top-notch customer service for over a decade. No one makes it easier to modify your ride. Visit AmericanMuscle.com today for your chance to win a 2018 Mustang RTR Spec 3. This is James Rea, editor and publisher of TheWeeklyDriver.com, reporting from day two of the LA Auto Show. Today was the first day that the car manufacturers opened up the exhibit halls where their new products are located. Several halls of uh, new vehicles, some with world debuts, some with North American debuts. So I spent most of the day so far walking around and talking to different manufacturers and observing the circumstances and the uh, shapes and sizes and sights and sounds of the first day where the manufacturers can put their respective uh, best wheels forward, if you will. The LA Auto Show this year has seemed to improve on a lot of different levels. The, the way that the automobiles are, are spaced in the exhibit halls is, seems to be nicer. There's a, a really good vibe this year, not only from a media standpoint, which has also improved, but there just seems to be a, a better karma, a better vibe to the LA Auto Show, which is, even though it's in 2017, it's the first of the 2018 auto shows, the national auto shows that get a lot of attention. Just to let you know, the uh, public uh, debut of the vehicles will begin on Friday, December 1st, and it'll extend through December 10th. So the uh, tickets and all the information, a lot of information, and really nicely presented is on the uh, LA Auto Show's website, www.laautoshow.com. Well, this morning they had a, uh, a nice media breakfast, and um, they got to, uh, not only was it a nice breakfast, but they brought in a bunch of vintage cars, uh, 20 or 30 vintage cars that were on a rally last night. So that was something new from the uh, Motorsports Guild, Motorsports Organization. And they presented some awards and things like that, and that was a nice preamble to the actually opening of the show. And I got to the showroom floor pretty early. I noticed a funny thing with Lincoln. Lincoln is really trying to up its game and become prominent luxury car it once was, and they were doing a rehearsal of... Uh, of the unveiling of their new products and they had a lot of producers around and they had a, a reader and they had a, a, a host and they had all kinds of technicians and and they what they were trying to do is is get it right for the guy who was going to give the presentation to take away for the public to take away that Lincoln is really trying to uh, reinforce its place in the luxury market um, Lincoln has claimed that in its first 10 10 months of sales this year were the best first 10 months of sales since 2007 Lincoln uh, was first sold in China in 2015, and the manufacturer claims it sold 10,000 units, which is you know pretty pretty good for for that market. Uh, Lincoln also was talking about it has the only nationwide uh, concierge service, where uh, vehicles are picked up and re-delivered at, at uh, owners' homes, and a, a Lincoln loaner is provided. Uh, it's the first luxury brand apparently that's had this service, and they've had it since late last year and. I was told that there have been 60,000 uh, service requests handled by this nice uh, concierge service that I think Lincoln is using to kind of get itself back in the game with some of the other luxury manufacturers. I also walked around on the, one of the showroom floors and I've always been intrigued by Honda because Honda you know, has done really well throughout its entire lineup uh, and the last few years they've been really promoting uh, their uh, insights and their knowledge and their futuristic look at hydrogen vehicles and the car is called the uh, Honda Clarity and they have three versions they have the uh, hydrogen fuel cell and they have a plug-in hybrid and they have an all-electric now and the hydrogen vehicle is only available in California and it's via only via uh, available via a lease and I asked the woman of course the question that everybody asks the Honda representative and she said that there are only about 30 refueling stations, hydrogen stations currently available in California and they're looking of course to expand that and many of them are part of a regular gas stations that also happen to sell um, hydrogen. What I really like about the car is that like other uh, green vehicles, you know, you get a lot of incentive to, to buy a Clarity. They, they're beautifully designed, uh, I think inside and outside they really look sharp and they have really nice color patterns, very 
very prominent, uh, very deep, rich colors. I think that that's, in terms of the exterior look of the car, it's really sharp looking. Of course, you get uh, $7,500 back from the federal government, and you get a $1,500 rebate back from California. But Honda is also um, providing more of an incentive. They're providing a $10,000 uh, fuel card for the use of the car, which I think really is a, a nice way to um, bring in uh, new buyers or potential new buyers. The plug-in hybrid will be available uh, nationwide December on December 1st in all 50 states. And the electric-only Honda Clarity is only available in California and Oregon. So I had a really nice discussion, and uh, we have an interview with um, the representative from Honda. Her name is Natalie Kumorante. So the Clarity fuel cell um, is available for lease only today in select California markets. It yes. went on sale about a year ago, December last year. It did. I was, that was one of my questions. I haven't seen any around yet, so I wondered... If, yes. they're, if they're available they only are. in California. They are because of the, the infrastructure, gotcha. the hydrogen station infrastructure, which is growing. Yes. Um, and it's excited. So California is leading the way on that. Mm -hmm. And the next step is to start putting stations on the East Coast. The car's doing really well. It's a really good lease program. Um, since this is a new technology, um, it's, it's only available via lease. Via lease. Okay. okay. Yes, but um, it's an attractive program because right now we're giving hydrogen fuel cell. Um, like fuel cell cards. Oh yes. So we're compensating people on fuel. Oh okay. So that's great. Okay. Um, just to kind of build, get that audience, build in kind of a customer base. Mm -hmm. Now each each great. Clarity has the ability to use all three platforms. No, 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 no. they're separate. So they're separate. They're, I beg your pardon. They, I beg your pardon. Yeah, they all have the same body structure. There's yes. little styling for Yes. So if you were to look at the front fascias, like the fuel cell has more um, air vents, more air intake. The plug-in hybrid has a second most, and then the web doesn't have like any really because it's all electric. It, you know, it has yes. some, like, yes. you know, aerodynamics to it. But there's little subtle differences. But overall, you know, it's a family of vehicles. Okay. Um, the plug-in hybrid is our 50-state national product. It's going to yes. be the volume seller as far as the series goes. It mm -hmm. will go on sale December 1st. Um, for lease and retail sale. Uh -huh. And what's interesting about this car is that it's really kind of launching the electrification for Honda. Yes, it is. So we're, we've been kind of out of the game for a little bit, and this is kind of our big way to get back in. We used to have the peanut. I, know, I, I used to call it the peanut, the little, the little, the insight. Yes. The little the insight. Yes. So this is our mainstream car that's going to really help us get back into that space again. Yes. Is one of the great benefits of a fuel cell car is refueling takes three to five minutes. Right. So there is really no learning curve because people are already used to what they're used to, right? You're, you pull up into your your Chevron station. You plug in, you plug out, and you're on your way to work. So same thing. It's three to five minutes. It's the same yes. amount of refueling time as gas. The same yes. potential location that you're used to in your neighborhood. So sure. And the great thing is there's long range. So the, this Clarity fuel cell has 366 miles range. Oh, is that right? So people don't have to refuel mm -hmm. often, right? Um, That's a good range. It's a really it's class leading actually. We have the longest range of any fuel cell vehicle. Okay. Now in in by chance, do you happen to know any numbers of in California how many places you can go to a gas station and get hydrogen? Yes, so there's a great website called California Fuel Cell Partnership okay. that shows a station map with all the oh. you know, green lit yes. stations that are open, y yes. ones that are under construction. And there is about, um, give or take, 30 stations right now. In California. In California. Okay. So they're built in clusters in neighborhoods where, let's say, um, one station's down. People aren't going to be compromised. There's a station really close by. Gotcha. So they're being built in clusters. And um, they're also, like, con uh, connecting stations. So say if you live in the Bay Area and you need to come down to Southern California. Yes. There's a station in Harris Ranch. So gotcha. now there's not just these cluster stations. There's these connector stations to get to A to B. Gotcha. If that makes so, sense. so yes, as opposed to a completely electric car that has, let's just say it's the other guy's right. electric car, and it has a range of uh, 240, 238. Mm -hmm. If you're going to come from Sacramento to LA, I drove it yesterday, the other day, it was 393 miles. Mm -hmm. I would have had to plan some stops along the way to say, I'm going to have lunch, exactly. I'm going to get a extended cup of coffee, but this is three to five minutes, yes. which is the benefit exactly. as Honda sees exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And what else is, um, really interesting is that 
since people are getting used to where these hydrogen stations are, if you own this car, mm -hmm. you know where the stations are. Yes. But there's definitely, you need to learn kind of where they are just because not every station has a fuel cell pump. Right now, the price of hydrogen fuel is more expensive than gas, but yes. then gas is, you know, pretty pretty low right now in general, right? Yes, it so is. the comparison is not apples to apples. No, it's Which not. is why we are essentially, not just us as an automaker, yeah. Other automakers too are compensating, so it's not you know a barrier to entry. But um, the way it's weighted instead of ga uh, gallons, it's kilograms. So it's about I want to say maybe eight dollars or so, eight or nine dollars. But we're already seeing price drop as more um, cars are coming to market. Right. People are purchasing hydrogen fuel, so we're seeing that this demand goes up. You know, yes. prices will come down and that kind of thing. And, and, so, and in terms of its footprint. It's not. It's nothing. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> the most abundant source, right? Is hydrogen. Right. So that's why we see hydrogen fuel cell cars really a long-term solution because it's clean for the environment. It's right. long range. It's no compromise to what people are already used to. Yes. And its only emission is water. Right. That's a good one. That should be your slogan. Yes. Our only emission is water. It is right. actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. We say our trademark is exhaust you can drink. I also visited probably uh, the most, the owners and the promoters uh, of the, probably the most unique concept car I've ever seen at, at the auto sh uh, LA Auto Show or any auto show for that matter. It's just called the Red Square. And uh, if you can imagine, it looks like a, a postal service delivery truck or a very small delivery truck with full size standing doors on the side. And it, it looks as if somebody took all of the bad qualities of the design of the Pontiac Aztec or other cars that are notoriously bad bad designs and put it all into one design uh, but on the one hand the car is you know funky and it has a great um, you know odd appeal to it but on the other hand it looks very very impractical and, and this car was uh, designed by a man who for years designed a BMW I think they were called BMW uh, butts because he had an unusual design to the BMWs. Um, so now he's presenting this car, but it's just the most unusual looking car. Again, imagine if you knew what the Pontiac Aztec looks like and you just expanded that in all different shapes and sizes. The side doors you can walk in standing up. Uh, very, very unique futuristic uh, car that uh, was reminded me of many years ago the movie AI where they had. Um, those uh, autonomous driving cars or cars that drove with robots so very futuristic looking and turned a lot of heads at the on the first day of the uh, manufacturer's debuts but we'll see if it you know comes to fruition some concepts you know transition into into uh, cars available to the public and sometimes they just kind of fade away and end up in somebody's garage or in a museum or or destroyed so that was another thing to see it was uh, it was over in the corner of the building and there were a lot of people around, you know, bright and early to see this very, uh, either very uh, funky cute or very unattractive car. One uh, auto reviewer I recognized from one of the magazines, a prominent national magazine, was looking at it. And I just asked him what he thought, and he had a, a one-word response. He said, awful. I also had a chance to speak with the second uh, company I've spoken with in the last couple of days. Um, this company is called Blinker, Blinker.com. And it's one of the new apps where you can do the entire process of buying a new or a used car or selling a new and used car all on your app, uh, on your telephone. There no need, there's no need to go into a dealership. There's none of uh, the anxiety that's provided by, f at least for many people, by visiting a dealer and uh, going through that anxiety of having to talk to different people and the negotiation process. This application works by taking a picture of your driver's license of your car if you're selling it or taking a picture of a, dr of a dr driver's license of a car that's for sale and but they provide many other services the, uh, the Carfax certificate is included um, you can buy insurance you can do all these different things based on this app that you can download from your phone uh, it's called Blinker uh, again Blinker.com the man his name is the owner of the company the CEO is Rod Busher and he a uh, longtime car dealership owner and we also spoke to him at length about his new way of presenting uh, cars for sale uh, by buyers and sellers. And many people have agreed that, you know, the old brick and mortar, there's going to be plenty of time for those companies to still sell cars. 
but many people have gone, like in many other areas, buying and selling cars online with apps and um, doing so in safe zones so you don't have to have somebody come to your home or even having the car delivered to your, ho to your home or a safe place um, to make a transaction. He's, he told me that, for example, there, there uh, are some people in their 80s who are buying their cars this way and they've had cars that have been sold for you know, several hundred thousand dollars and they've had cars to sell for sale that have sold for you know, a few thousand dollars. So it's all over the map. I also wanted to mention that if you're, if you're coming to the LA Auto Show, you might as well arrive in a nice vehicle. And I left Sacramento the other day, uh, just about just under 400 miles from Sacramento to Los Angeles, primarily on Interstate 5. And I was driving a 2017 Volvo V90 cross country. And, you know, Volvo has had this long reputation of just being a solid car. You get in the car, you feel safe. It's big and bulky, but big and bulky in a good way. It just has that very comfortable, safe feel to it. This car also has very nice maneuverability, very nice comfort on the road, very solid feel. Of course, driving from Sacramento to L.A., you have to go over the grapevine, a very steep uh, ascent for several miles, and particularly in the wind, the weather can change suddenly, and... I found myself just cruising over this hill while many other trucks were near the side of the road and other cars were having to slow down and get in the right-hand lane. I just uh, sailed right through with this uh, beautiful, not what now they're calling an estate wagon. The car has a lot of nice features, even some small features. For example, on the side view mirrors, it has you know a head, head up warning, uh, side detection mirrors for cars in other lanes. And, and the way that it works is the, the, the flashing part is curved around the side mirror. So rather than just having this big bolt flash at you that's kind of obnoxious in some cars, this one is done very efficiently, but it's curved around the side of the mirror to give you a, a, a nice heads up, but also doing it without having any shock to it. You can adjust the, the driving mode you wish with a little, little turn knob. It goes into uh, different uh, mode sets and that was really efficiently done by Volvo. It also has great visibility, uh, great comfort on the seats, and everything is done, all the, all the functions, the heat and the air and the radio functions uh, and the navigation screen are all done by a touch screen. And there's quite a bit of a learning curve involved, but once I figured it out and once I did it a few times, I, I really got to liking this um, touch screen and how everything is right there in front of you, rather than turning knobs or pushing buttons, it's all via the, the touch screen. It's kind of a mini version of what Tesla uses. The car's rated at 30 miles per gallon on the freeway, and I averaged more than 75 miles per hour on most of the route uh, down here, straight away on Interstate 5. Once I got to Los Angeles, of course, there's some other auxiliary freeways and a little bit of city driving, but I averaged 28 point nine miles per gallon on the drive down here 388 miles and I thought that that was a pretty fair assessment of the EPA estimate of 30 miles per gallon because of course that's done at average speeds and here you know I was uh, exceeding the speed limit sometimes more than 10 miles per hour the other thing I really liked about the car was the ease of the cruise control uh, right in front of you is a, a, a nice prominent button you press the button you push a small lever up and down this car, I really liked uh, the cruise control features. Several times I would be going 75 or 76 and someone would switch lanes and they were a little bit close, not unsafe, but a little bit close. And I could just feel the uh, adaptive driving of the car slowing down to um, the safe speed and keeping that same distance. So Volvo does a very nice job with, with that feature. So I, I think that for day one, we, we uh, covered a lot of bases. Uh, there's plenty more to see, and we'll do that in um, uh, tomorrow's report from the L.A. Auto Show. I want to encourage uh, listeners to visit my website, www.theweeklydriver.com. We'll have lots of images and more reports from the L.A. Auto Show, and we will be back with you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. See you then. Bye-bye. The Weekly Driver podcast receives support from americantrucks.com. Your late model Silverado, Sierra, Ram, and F-150 online aftermarket retailer. Bringing you all of the hottest parts from accessories to lift kits, from wheels to tires and winches. AmericanTrucks.com has the knowledge and know-how to make your wildest dreams come to reality. 
Visit americantrucks.com for your chance to win $17,760 in upgrades for your truck.